Welcome, everybody. Malcolm Teasdale here. Great to be with you. And today, joining me is this gentleman from Down Under, where women glow and men plunder, apparently, Bing Fraser. Now, put your seatbelts on, folks. This guy's been through a lot in his life. He's a travel addict like myself, uh, but probably more extreme. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Bing, good afternoon, or is it good morning where you are? Good morning and happy Australia Day, folks. Thank you for having me, Malcolm. Absolute mm. pleasure. I think uh, good to, good opening description of Ben Plunder. I think I've got that one on board, so thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that hit will be around for years and years to come. That's that's a great that's a great song, wasn't it? But anyway. <laughs> trash, absolutely trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. she goes all right. <laughs> anyway, folks, Bing is from the great city of Sydney, Australia. If you haven't been there, it's uh, one of my favorites in the world. Melbourne's pretty darn good as well, but Sydney is great if you haven't had a chance to, to go there, folks. But anyway... Welcome, Bing. I've checked out your website. I've got it on one of my screens here. So I'm asking some questions about your travels. But when when you first sent me uh, an email, uh, it was sort of intriguing. I thought, oh, I, I, I need to know more about this stuff because um, I'm a bit of a travel addict myself. Um, but I can't say. There's been times I've sort of uh, been worried, you know, um, been sort of risque moments. But obviously... Uh, your title of what not to do when you're traveling sort of intrigues me. So uh, anyway, I've got a few questions and uh, do your best to answer them as candidly as possible. And that will be far great. away. We'll touch on your book later on. So let's start off with um, you've been through a bit of an ordeal in your travels. So, and let's ask, start off with this one. Now you mentioned that you've um, been arrested. Uh, is that right? And yeah, but you can yeah, tell me right. where where was that, by the way? I had a slight disagreement with the law. Um, yeah, no, that was that was in in the good old deep south of Mississippi, United States. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, they, it, it's uh, they don't take so kindly to drinking drinking on the streets there. So I, I don't know how how far we can indulge in the story, but um, we were they have what's called the university bucket list down in the south. So um, it's pretty much just a a, a compilation of drinking and misadventures, Jason Bourne style conquests around the university. And one of them is to go and have a, a drink with William Faulkner, who was a famous poet from Oxford. Yeah. And, uh, I recognize the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a sign of respect, he meant to go and have a shot of shot of whiskey, which was his favorite drink at his graveyard um, on, on his, on his gravestone. Sorry. Um, which I thought was pretty much the exact opposite to, uh, a sign of respect, but that's the South, baby. So we uh, we all ended up going there. Um, again, it, it's a complicated story, and there were a few ins and outs, which which I which I'll go into detail. Um, can I go into detail? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah, well, let's hear it. Go ahead, man. You yeah, let's, let's spit it out. No, you're right, Malcolm. Let's party. Eh? Um, no, it was just it was the end of a night night out and. Uh, we were mates with the rugby boys down there, which are the big rugby team. And they pulled a street sign post from the ground and, and left it on the car like yeah. a bunch of idiots. Um, but I thought it would be rude if to just leave it there. So we took it with us. Um, but with the windshield, uh, with, the, with, the, with the street sign post in, the, the back door didn't close. So the guy driving was a, was a bit of a clown himself and floored the accelerator. So we went flying out the back with the street sign post. And I was just like mate, you almost killed us. Don't be an idiot. Just drive properly. So we, we threw it back in. We still can't close the rear the rear boot. So then he did it again because he's an idiot and we were unfazed. So he slammed on the brakes and the, the street sign went flying through the windshield. So we've got this street sign post that's impaling the windshield. Oh, good Lord. And then, then they've had the genius idea to go to the graveyard. So we're in the graveyard with a the, the alarm system of the car is howling because the, the street sign post is still impaling the windshield. And anyway, he's just like, don't worry about it. We'll go and, we'll go and have a beer, eh? We'll forget all about this with, with our mate Bill Faulkner. Um, and then the cops turned up and it's, it's not exactly an easy scenario to, to, uh, to explain that one. It was, um, yeah, there were, there were five of us. Two of them went running off in one direction. I don't know if it was the alcohol, the unfamiliar terrain or or the alcohol, but we took, we took the wrong turn and we ended up in front in full view of the policeman. 
he was just like, mate, what are you doing? And I'm like, mate, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. And he's like, is that your car? So it's my mate's. And we couldn't quite get out of that pickle, so we yeah. unfortunately we had to spend spend a couple of nights in the old. Yeah, it was a good old boys down in the south. You said Mississippi, right? So Mississippi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the I, I, yeah that probably wasn't too pleasant, but um, okay. They probably asked you when you were leaving the country as well. I'm sure of that. <laughs> That's just, right. Just, yeah, yeah. Can I just leave a little bit soon? All right. Well, okay. Uh, I've seen this picture on your website. You got teeth missing. What on earth happened there? And don't tell me it was the Mississippi police, no. No, 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 no. They were a bit friendlier. Um, I was in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get some some of the beads. I don't know if anyone's familiar with, if everyone, sorry, is familiar with Mardi Gras in New Orleans. I've been to New Orleans a few times, but I've never been to the Mardi Gras um, party, no. Yeah, no, it, it's outstanding. If if everyone if anyone has a chance to go, I highly recommend. It's um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty much just a, a ma major street party. And, yeah. Um, you have all these clowns who buy uh, pay for a balcony time, which is yeah. pretty much the whole street's lined with balconies, and um, they yeah, they, these <laughs> smug <laughs> rich bastards throw down beads at people who who they think are entertaining. It's usually girls who are you know, exposing a bit more than what they should be. Yeah, got it. And, and, and unfortunately, they weren't taking too kindly to my old titties. And um, so I had to try and impress them some other way. And he's just like, you got to do something pretty impressive. I was like, mate, I'll break dance for you. Okay. You ever seen a white man dance like this? Unfortunately, I can't break dance. I, I, I can't even, I don't have my left foot from my right no, foot. No, yeah, so. I can't either. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just like, ah, oh, you know, a bit of liquid confidence in us. I can do anything. So... I started a, a major dance circle, would have had 30, 40 people around us, just everyone's clapping. I start cutting some of the finest white man shapes known to man. It's a fucking square, a triangle, everything, absolutely everything. And then um, I did went for the main course, which was the whole break dancing part. And it was this move which I was meant to meant to tuck my right foot between behind my left knee and kind of bounce off the ground. Unfortunately, I I I've, my projected uh, fall towards the ground was led by my head. And um, unfortunately, my teeth didn't bounce as well as my foot was meant to. Yeah, no, and, they're not designed for that, no. But I did get my beads in the end. So who's the real winner? Yeah, well, there, there you go. Plus, I'm, I'm sure you had a skin full to drink by that time, right? Yeah. No, no, I, no, I, not one. But you're no, able to... Yeah, but damps a little, yeah. All right. Yeah, one or two quiet ones. That's it. So it was good. It, it numbed most of the pain coming from that area of my face where my teeth were meant to be. So yeah, it, it was okay in the end. Okay, you, you survived. That's that's your memories of New Orleans. No, I've only been there. Um, I know people have been to Mardi Gras. But I've just been there. It's, well, it's dead right now, but during the busy times, and I've when people have come over to see me from England. And my sister came over and some friends came over. I take them there. Everyone has different opinions about it, but it's a wild place. You got to see it. You well, it's like it, it, like so many places. You you get what you what you sign up for, don't you? It's yeah, like yeah. um, you know, Vegas isn't for everyone. It's just like, well, it's not made for everyone, is it? <laughs> you know, no, so, no. You yeah. go there. You, 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 there's an element of risk, but it's like go to any city. If you want trouble, you just walk into a bad area. Bad areas exist in, in cities all over the world, and it, like they do in America. So. You don't go looking for trouble, but it, it sometimes it just stuff just happens, you know. One hundred percent. But that, that's what kills me. I, I get a lot, uh, especially a lot of mates from the US who are just like, "Oh, how could you travel to this country or that country?" Like, you know. But you're just like, have you ever walked two two streets off the main strip of a Miami or a Vegas or a, even New York yeah. or? You know, it, it's there's a lot of ignorance, I think. Well, in the world, I mean, that's sorry, that, that sounded very uh, targeted against Americans, but there. No matter where you go in the world, there are just bad places and oh, places you're meant to avoid. Absolutely, yeah. So as long as you keep your wits about you and you're not an idiot. Like yeah, me, I'm going to ask you more about that a bit later on, your scariest place. But what's this issue with schizophrenia? Is Are you talking about yourself here? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that one's a bit a bit more X-rated, that story. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I got acquainted with... Um, 
Panamanian bud. Oh, it's American podcast. So you guys are fine. You, you, Marijuana is legal over there, so we can talk about it. Well, um, I, it's state dependent. It's not as freely available as that. Medicinal oh, purpose is basically, but no. Well, if, if you're not from Colorado or California, turn this off. Um, um, yeah, or Washington <laughs> State. Yeah, I think they're all <laughs> different up there. Yeah. No, but I'm not a I'm not much of a drugs man myself. But when I was in Panama, I thought it was like Panama, Central America, not yeah, not Panama City. Not Panama sorry. City, yeah. Um, yeah, I was I was like, oh, we'll we'll give it a go. You know, I'm I'm usually happy with my liquid liquid uh, confidence, but I was like, let's let's spend a night on the grass, eh? And the 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 lady who sold it to us was like, good luck, and I'm like. Oh no, that's that's not what a drug dealer is meant to tell you when they sell you the goods. That's that's uh, that's an interesting one. So with with her luck on my shoulders, we went and started huffing down down this massive uh, yeah joint. And um, I don't smoke very well, but I was like, well, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it properly. So I started puffing down this thing like I was, you know, I was I was trying to win something. And then yeah, yeah that's not how you're meant to take. Panama bud apparently um and I went past the greening out phase straight to the schizophrenic phase and um yeah I was in a spell for about 12 hours that had a two-week hangover of paranoia anxiety and depression oh my I God. yeah I just uh, I just couldn't imagine that um, well, that's the thing. I'd, I'd been warned about greening out and I was just like you know what that's all right I can I can run that risk schizophrenia I don't recommend that one that one was heavy I uh I had a two-year uh, concussion where I lost my sight, my hearing, my thoughts, had voices, everything. It did not even touch the schizophrenic. It was not on the same scale. So wow. just, just don't recommend it. If you go to Panama and you you get offered a little bit of a doobie, uh, treat that thing with a little bit more respect, I think. <laughs> you know, I've never tried the stuff, to be honest with you. been offered no, it, that. but I've got, I remember just walking through the streets of Catman, doing Nepal and the people coming up. So, do you want some weed, man? It grows freely there in in the mountains, but you, you, they're not people are not supposed to really uh, sell it in the city. But kind of marijuana based accidents do happen, and I think the police there just it's going to happen. You know, <laughs> it don't matter, but it's, it's actually illegal. So you just, just got to be careful. Well, that explains that. But your concussion? Well, you have the concussion from New Orleans, or is this something else where you got you get knocked out completely? No, yeah, no. This was in Nicaragua. San Juan del Sur in Central America, we were doing, um, it was funny that they have this major party there, which is called Sunday Fun Day, which is like meant to be the biggest party in Central America. Excuse me. It's just, um, it's like a pub crawl, but between yeah. pools. So it's, it's advertised as a pool yeah. crawl. Um, and yeah, we turned up <laughs> a day early. Um, and we, but the more mate who I was traveling with, he went to bed. But I had half a bottle of rum. I was like, I'll just finish this off, then I'll come up and join you. Um, that that was the worst decision I've I've made. In Famous before, last words, so yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> exactly right. Um, so I went to the bar. We were doing a few too many shots, and then the hostel owner uh, Megs and I was started hosing down the tiles, and then the the bartender starts getting out the liquid soap and just turn the whole thing oh, into just like a slip yeah. and slide. And uh, everyone's naked, and it was it was a little bit of fun. But then me being the idiot that I was, I went outside. I'm just like, watch this, all right, guys. Everyone take notes. So I've I've went charging forward, but he's slapping everywhere, and the water had had creeped outside from where I was taking off. But yeah, I was slightly intoxicated and didn't realize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I um. I threw myself forward and slipped at the same time, which kind of resulted in the fall to multiply exponentially and cracked my skull open. It was um, it it was a major gas, but I didn't black out or anything when I hit the ground. It was just a, a disastrous blood everywhere. Oh um, and then the the Megs was just like, uh, "Don't worry, I know someone who does great stitches." And um, oh. we're in the middle of Nicaragua. It, it, in San Juan del Sur, it's this small town. If you ever crack your head open, just don't do it in Nicaragua, guys. I, I highly recommend to be just anywhere with just adequate medical facilities, even just a Band-Aid. I would have killed for a Band-Aid at that stage. So um, she, she took us out for a drive 30 minutes into the wilderness till we came to like this set of abandoned buildings. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, like, do you know how abandoned a set of buildings have to look 
to look abandoned in Nicaragua. And I'm just like, nah, 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 nah. Any, anywhere but here, Megs, please. Just anywhere. I'll take me to the 7-Eleven shop down the corner and I'll hack it together myself, I promise. Yeah. Um, so she was just like, stand back. I, I just need to smooth things over. So it's it's 3 a.m. by this stage, by the way. Yeah. So she's knocking on this door that looks like it's been there since the Spanish conquest. And um, this it, it was silence for about two minutes. And then you just hear this yelling through the door. And I'm just like, oh, no, <laughs> no, we're not welcome here. That's not good. And then he eventually opens the door. It's this six foot five Nicaraguan man. I've never seen a Latin man so big in my life to this day. And he's just yelling, just unleashing on Megs. And I'm just like, ah, oh, no, I don't think he's going to accept my credit card. Um, and then he, <laughs> he eventually let us in and Megs, Megs was like, Oh, yeah, no, we're good to go in. He's happy to have us. I'm like, I saw that whole exchange, Megs, okay? I saw the whole thing. I, he's not happy to have us. No, so right? We, we, we make our way in and we, we go to this molded door at the end of this hall, open it up, and it's just a real-life saw scene. I'm just like, you are kidding me, aren't you? So it's like this blood-stained chair under a flickering oh light. And I'm just like, this isn't kosher. This isn't good. Um, so he's got all these, <laughs> well, we sit down on the, the seat, I accept I'm walking away with hepatitis and he starts hacking my head together with this rusted bolt, like needle. It was just brutal, a disaster, man. absolute disaster, but credit where credit's due. He hacked my head together. It only leaked for two months after that. And, um, we, we, we were okay. But, um, the, the whole night we went back to the naked tiger. Um, I was, I was vomiting all night and yeah. obviously, Hindsight's a great thing. I, I realize now that was a um, symptom of the concussion. But at the time, when you've got the biggest party in Central America the next day, you you pass it off to the pile of no concern. Yeah. And I um I did some silly things the next day, which weren't good for a concussion. And I had to deal with the consequences for two years and eight months of traveling after that, which I had planned. So. It was an interesting time. <laughs> oh, I could have ended badly for sure. Yeah. So you you were in the in the boonies. You weren't in Managua. You were somewhere in the boonies of Nicaragua then, right? Have yeah. You? No, I, I wish it was Managua, but yeah, no, they, they've at least got buildings that, that stand upright. This yeah. was this wasn't yeah, it wasn't very friendly. Wasn't yeah, it just comes to when I was growing up, I used to play obviously the Brits and uh, Australia have plenty in, uh, in common, especially rugby, right? I was playing rugby growing up once. Um, yeah, I was probably late teens, early 20s. I got knocked out playing rugby. So the, the guys dragged me on the sideline of the pitch and left me there. And they carried on playing, which they do, of course. <laughs> so, And I, I must have started shaking and they called an ambulance. And my buddy called my parents at home and said, don't like to worry you, Mr. and Mrs. Teasdale, but Malk has been carted off the hospital with head injuries or concussion in the hospital. And my parents said, Oh really? Okay, we'll go and uh, we'll go and look, look at him after we've had our dinner. <laughs> just brilliant. <laughs> That's typical my parents. But some of us are just you, injury but... prone, right? And I just wondered, uh, you know, take it. You know, just it's easier to do it himself again. But anyway, I don't want to alarm you, but Malcolm's frothing at the mouth and twitching hysterically. Oh, we just ordered the steak. I apologise. We'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah i know it's 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 amazing isn't it? but anyway uh what have we got oh guns guns and robberies explain that that's not a good one that that's probably one we should we should leave for the book okay that's, uh, guns. uh i just start alex with one question was, was the gun related stuff uh, anything to do with the united states yes <laughs> leave that one alone all right yeah. it's always a yeah, point but... of contention here but i know we're Robberies, is that anything to do with the States or not? I, you can talk, can you talk about that? Yeah, oh, I've been robbed to keep counting. Like, um, there was one time, I think a good one is in, in Costa Rica. We were just dancing as usual. Uh, just that, sorry, it's a, in a bar. Um, and one of the locals pickpocketed us. It was just like, took our phone and ran out. So I saw, um, I saw a bloke scurrying out of the bar. Yeah, I told my mate Dylan, I'm like, I reckon it was that guy. Yeah. Um, so we chased him down the road. He handed off something to to two other shadier looking characters, and they went taken off down an alleyway. And I, like an idiot, followed them in. And I was just like, Hola, amigo, you you have my phone. And I'm just negotiating with these guys in terrible Spanish. Eventually, they pulled out their two phones. 
Uh, so it's like pulled out two phones, but neither were mine. So there was just a whole, it was like a whole intricate system where there were just locals robbing uh, tourists all night, pretty much. Oh. Um, so I ended up taking one of the phones off them. Then went out the front. I was pretty angry. So I was just like, next bloke who comes out, we're, we're doing the same thing. So, so we followed some local, another local bloke down the road. Just like you, you, you took my phone. He pulled out two phones again. I took, so he took one of his phones, and then there was a, a third guy who I got speaking to. Who, um, it was interesting though, because it was again, like, long story short, because um, you, you get pretty angry when you, you're in these third world country, not third world, country, developing countries. Yeah, and they, um, uh, they, they have different uh, ex- societal expectations than we do. So your first reaction to that is just anger. You're just like, yeah, yeah. why is this state dickhead taking my phone? And then you put yourself in their shoes. They haven't had the same privileges, the same opportunities that we've had. And they're, they're doing these things from a perspective of self-preservation, not yeah. malice. Um, yeah. So you get talking to these guys. Um, it was the same I see in Athens, Greece. I started talking to them after they tried to take my phone. <laughs> and I was just like, mate, what are you doing? He's just like, Oh, mate, we have nothing. I'm sorry. You know, it, it wasn't personally. Uh, that, that does happen. Um, in Costa Rica, where were you, by? Were you in San Jose? Nah, no, we're in Tamarindo. That was we we went to San Jose. Um, yeah. That was that was nice. I'm not the biggest fan of Costa Rica, to be honest with you. Really? Um, I, I think, uh, without it, it has a lot of beauty on face value. Yes, mm-hmm. I don't think it has the authenticity that comes with the other surrounding countries. Um, yeah. There's one, obviously, the ludicrous expense of the place is like, if you compare it to Nicaragua, Guatemala, a Panama is similar, but still more expensive. Yeah. But um, I just don't think you're getting the cultural um, benefits of, of a country that hasn't been as touched by American tourism yeah. that Costa Rica has. It's kind of been infested by that red white and blue fiend uncle sam and uh um, yeah i just I wonder it's... because i talked to my wife about it so we, we're planning where we can go this year because we, we've already had the first dose of the vaccination here and mm-hmm. we thought about it and i looked at costa rica funnily and you mentioned tamarindo because i was going to say that to you because there's quite a few expats live there now because they've got yes. a good healthcare system and it's nature i mean it's the beaches are supposed to be really nice close to the jungle lots of wildlife you go for walks every day so is it sort of how long ago was that when you were there i think i think i need to preface this with saying um for a holiday i think it's perfect i think you've got everything that you want i think Mm -hmm. if you're looking to travel and my biggest thing when you're traveling you're looking to experience another culture you're you're looking to get get shock your system you know get get out into the jungle and and fight for your life no but um I think I think Costa Rica has everything you want for a for a uh, comfortable getaway, and I think with that you lose a lot of the the authenticity that comes with its surrounding countries. Yes, yeah. that I much I don't like. I, I did go to I can't remember the, the port. I was on a cruise ship, and it stopped at a port there in Costa Rica. I can't remember the name of it, but but I went on a, a kayaking trip there. It was quite nice actually. It's the first time I've seen a sloth up a tree, but it was quite a nice activity just kayaking there. And uh, it, it did look quite nice, but I went snorkeling as well. But that's about as much as I did. I did stay overnight. I had to get back. It's a, it is it is beautiful. It's stunning. And, and it has, as you said, every 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 animal, every exotic animal you'd wish to see in a tropical paradise. It has, um, like I said, the beaches are beautiful. The the bars are beautiful. The, the people are, are nice. It's, yeah. it's just, um, I think you can, you can have a comfortable holiday in Florida, though. I think you can have a comfortable holiday in California. With or Hawaii, and um, I don't think you, you're going to go to Costa Rica. It's it's pretty much similar to those. I feel. Yeah, um, you're without, right. Uh, just without with with most people speaking Spanish, you, you're kind of just jumping into a different uh, language without too much yeah. more of the excess. Well, I know there's some so many places. Also, as an, I'm a British and an American citizen right now, so I've got two passports. But either, with either of those two passports, it's very difficult to get in any country right now. It's yes, w- without uh, challenges with tests and all that. So we live in hope. We've already booked a flight to Asia in June. Whether, oh, really? Um, yeah, we, 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 we're going to fly out to Singapore and just uh, stay in Asia for about a month. However, that's our plan. 
we're just waiting to see over the next few weeks whether anything changes. So anyway, um, but those, those incidents you went through, I mean, uh, yeah, you're still alive. Right, that's the main thing. Yeah, it could have could have gone badly, but uh, you know, the the, cor- the corpse is still there. I uh, mm. don't know if there's too much left in between the ears, but but apparently one leg's still in front of the other, one foot's still in front of the other. So <laughs> we're kicking. Isn't it, isn't it funny, big? The more you do, the more you want to do. It's, oh yeah, it, yeah. You just it's an it's an, that's why it's an addiction. Right. The the the, the more I go to, I, I I spend a lot of years on business travel. I go more adventure travel now but the more school places i go the more i want to do it and uh there will come a time though i'm a lot older than you by the way um but uh, there will come a time where i just can't do it anymore so i'm trying we're trying to do what we can i mean that, that's it, it, it's that. interesting it's it's like what they say about reading it's just like it's something that everyone wants to do more of so if you if you've read a couple of books you're just like oh you understand the knowledge that you get so you want to read a couple of more you work your way up the, the ladders, then you've got the avid readers and they are so inclined to keep reading, but are frustrated because you realize that you can't read everything and feel like that's like traveling where it's yeah early on, you're in your infancy. You, you want to go and see the New York, you want to see France, Paris, you yeah. want to see London and all that. And then the more you do it and the more underground you go, then you're just like, I want to do everything, <laughs> absolutely I everything. Know. It's so frustrating <laughs> because know. you can't. <laughs> you, you there can't. is too much I, to I know. do. Yeah. So, so what's the um I don't know how many countries you've been to, but uh, what's the the craziest place you've been to? Oh, that's a if, like like good. nightlife or something, or just just playing crazy. Um, Berlin's up there with nightlife. That's, really? Yeah, it's known for its underground scene, and that's I didn't see as much of it as I I would have liked, but one that's one place I really want to go back to pretty soon. That's um that's pretty much free for all when you find the right clubs. Um, Thailand's obviously a, a pretty obvious one. Um, again, if, if the price is right, you can, you can pretty much get away with doing anything, <laughs> which is uh, not a great thing, but it, it's, it's a little bit of fun. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you've been to Thailand, you've probably been to Pattaya. Have you? No, I heard your podcast on that. It sounds oh, I never got there, but it sounds out of control. So it's, yeah, uh, I, I know about this thing about, you know, I, I, because I, I typically go to Asia once a year, but I pass through Bangkok. I feel comfortable in that city. It's a great city, and uh, it's a way to get over jet lag for a few days. But I thought this time, instead of saying Bangkok, I'd just take a ride down to Pattaya and do some diving there, and that didn't work out. So then I'll end up going out on the town. Oh, my God. This is <laughs> wild stuff. So, uh, so what was it, what's the, like, the scariest place you've been to? Oh, scariest. Um Again, like when you go off the beaten track in, say, Guatemala or something, I, I think Guatemala is probably my favorite place that I've ever been. Oh, really? Yeah. But, um, but it's, and again, like that's out of control for a lot of the places there. So to finish your question, uh, I don't know the answer to your original question. Sorry, your first question It's because like Vegas can be when you, when you find, when you, you find the right place with the right people, yeah. it's pre- again, just a free for all. Um, and it's it's the same with places in Mexico. It's um, there are a lot of places which if you if you dig far enough without being an idiot, you'll find some pretty fun places. <laughs> um, but uh, the 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 most dangerous again, I I think I've I've felt most uncomfortable in the United States, and I know that sounds like a a pretty odd odd answer, <laughs> but um, when you go two or three. Because I'm a big wanderer. I just kind of wander when I, especially yeah. when I'm drinking. It's just like, ah, this might be fun. Let's let's go down here and let's have a look down here, you know. And then you realize you're a bit further out into the deep end that you should be. And um, like even in in San Francisco, which is like one of the 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 most progressive, cleanest states in in America, we were staying out in the boondocks, and I was again dressing like an idiot probably not wearing what i should have been wearing just shorts and a singlet thongs and you're walking through crack city and you're just like people are like you're in a dangerous part of town boy you're dressed like you're going to the beach and da 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 and then you're seeing people smoking up with their knives and you can say guns and you're just like whoa i am not in kansas anymore am i so no who, uh, who, who who are the people that are telling you you're in a dangerous part of town the the people that are on the streets so yeah. the, the, you know, i've heard of um people being stopped by police and police saying that to, to people. So 
look, you don't need to be here. You know, is that right? Yeah. Is, but you don't need to be here as a, a, a citizen. No, yeah, no, yeah no, I, I feel like it was the same in Vegas when you get off and then you get people offering you drugs left, right and center. Yeah. You're just like, no, nah, we're good. And then you go even deeper and you're just like, oh, no, no, it's time to turn back now because um, you start seeing the gangs and everything else. Yeah. I think Compton for a bit, Compton was just like, yeah, I probably shouldn't be walking through here by myself either. Um, <laughs> so there were a few times, especially when I was 18, I was a bit of an idiot um, and I was walking certain places at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And I was just like, yeah, nah, well, we, I, we, we shouldn't be doing I, this. I, could, I can't stay that uh, awake that early in the morning. I'm, <laughs> I'm in bed way before that. But <laughs> interesting that way, thing, think. though, if you have a chance, look at there's various, I, I look at this through the world indexes and there's one for the safest country in the world. And just Google that, uh, safest country index, and you'll be surprised where the, the United States sits in that ranking. All right, I'll let you look at that. You, you, you're going to be, be sure of it. Yeah, but it I don't is, think I'll, I don't think I'll be too shocked though. To be honest, no, with you. It, it, I, it supports I, probably uh, what you're saying there. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, that's and, right. Well, I'm still here. I, I live in a, a, a small town on the beach, and it's, it's, it's safe where I live. And uh, but not too far away. They have a bit of trouble there, but it's not like this huge city. We used, we used, we used to live in Atlanta, and. Uh, and then uh, there was what we call it, get up in the morning, put on the news, and it was the murder of the day, you know. It's, going, it's every day this stuff happens. <laughs> it's not <laughs> you never know when you're tired <laughs> up, mate, I don't know. Oh, God. Um, anyway, on my other monitor, I'll get your website. I mean, you've got your head stuck in a cannon by the looks of it. Um, <laughs> I do not recall. It's not with a match, so you're pretty safe there. But, you, you, you know, you, 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 uh, the book is called uh, Unprotected Treks, right? Yes, that that's the one. That's yes. right. Yeah, that's a pretty good title, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you in detail why you called it that, but <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the first chapter you put, I love traveling. Why do we do it, right? So, you know, I've got my reasons, but what's I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm I'm read your book yet, but I'm just curious. What's your answer to why why people like us keep traveling? I know we have to, we want to, but what, what's your reasoning? No, that's actually, it's a good question because that story, the whole part of the story, it's like an anti-travel book. And that that first story is pretty much, I feel anyone who has traveled would be able to relate to that first story where it's just everything goes wrong. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong. And you're just like, why am I doing this? I'm in the world's most uncomfortable bed in the middle of nowhere. I don't know anyone, just I, I'm sleeping on a bed of rocks. It is 40 degrees and he's just a nightmare. He's uncomfortable and everything else. But that's that's how we learn and that's that's why we do it. It's it's that feeling of being out of your comfort zone and just the possibilities are endless, aren't they? Like you you the, the fact that you don't know what's going to happen the next day. You you are in this state of unpredictability where the world is your oyster and you don't know where you're gonna end up tomorrow. What's what what uh misadventures are going to come across your path and it's just outstanding because because those times where it goes wrong are usually hilarious and you're just you're going to learn from that and then have a funny story yeah when the time go when it goes well there is nothing for it that nothing you can compare to it it is exactly it is like nothing else that you're going to see especially in your comfortable pocket of the world you realize how big the world is and how how anything is possible if you put your mind to it and you, you let the let the path take its natural course, I guess. So, um, but yeah. what what why I do it? Um, again, I say this all the time, but it's like the one piece of advice that I've constantly been given, and um, is that to to travel while you while you're young and single. And I don't think that's limited to being young or or even being single, but. It's yeah. the fact that when you, you lock yourself into the natural course of society, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you get your job, you, you go along, you get, your, you get married, you, get, you have your kids, your family and all that. It's fine because a lot of people find their meaning in that and it's, it's a way to live a life to so, for so many people. But yeah. um, not, I don't believe that I'm going to get older and then regret all that time that I traveled when I was younger. Well, no, you won't. No, for sure you won't. No. And um, every time I... I speak to someone about my stories or where I've been, I pretty much consistently get the same advice from people who are a bit older. It's just like, keep doing it. 
just keep doing it. You, you mm-hmm. won't, you won't regret. Um, you say, yeah, I understand what I'm giving up. You, you're giving up a lot of career opportunities. Um, the fact it's a meaningful relationship, all mm-hmm. these things that are great, but um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the trajectory I'm going down. Even the fact okay. that I don't know what the, what I'm doing and, Everyone keeps questioning me what I'm doing. I'm like, I don't know, but I'm having a good time while I'm doing it. So, yeah. called flying by the seat of your pants. That's a good way of putting it. Um, I think you're bang on. I, I should probably no. I won't say. That. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but my, my my thought, I, I do it for the learning um, aspect of it. Well, I like mixing with foreign cultures. But it, here's here's the day that, and you will probably think the same way. You're lying on the deathbed, your deathbed, and they're getting ready to pull the plug. You don't want to have any regrets at, at that at that time, so is that's why we do what we do. Some people aren't interested in uh, stuff like that, and uh, but I, I think you'll agree here that you know we can here we can go to the beach, have a lovely day with the family and mates, and drink beer and do that. Just go to the beach, nice beach here. Well, we remember that, but. Going to somewhere obscure, go camping in the Mongolian wilderness. That stuff stays with you forever, right? One hundred percent. And that those are those are what uh, are the wonderful memories because you did it while you could do it, and that, that, that's a that's a big thing as far as I'm concerned. I, I think you're bang on. It, there's nothing wrong with not with that not attracting you though. Uh, that's why I think everyone needs to realize everyone has their own libido that they have to follow. Yeah. So if if you find comfort in staying at home. And um, you're happy, happy with your life to, to you know, you, you enjoy your corner of the world. That's fine. Yeah, it's not for me, and it's not not for you. But, but that's okay. It's when when people start judging you for for going and seeing the world and seeing. It, it's just like, mate, I, I recommend you go and see it because it's a pretty bloody cool place to see. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And as you said, when when you're lying on your deathbed, I, I feel that's why a lot of people go, oh, why do things keep happening to you? And it's just like, well, when I'm in a scenario, I go regardless of the consequences, I go, will I ever be in this scenario again? And would I regret not taking that path, which might be a bit more dangerous and might, you know, be a bit more risque. I was like, well, fuck it. I'm not going to be in this position again. Let's, let's give it a go. Eh? Yeah, no, <laughs> let's go. Go and so far you survived. And so that's, that's <laughs> a good thing. Right? You're, here to, <laughs> you're here to tell the story. It was great. That's exactly, exactly <laughs> right. So far. Anyway, how can people, uh, you, your, your website's called bingfraser.com, right? Yes. And for, for people who tune into this uh, when it gets posted, um, probably a week or so, but um, if people want to track you down and see photographs or anything you post online, social media, where can they find you? I think you have an Instagram account, do you, or something like that? Yeah. Instagram's the only one I'm really active on. I, I hate social media. So I, um, I, I, I try my best to, to keep up to date on my Instagram, um, but I'm going to be starting to write more blog posts on my website in the coming months, I'm just trying to get everything sorted with um, my book and my audio book at the moment, which is just an absolute disaster. We're hoping to start um, start blogging a bit more in the in the coming months. So, Bing Fraser is a good one, and then I guess from Amazon.com is where you can buy the debauchery I call a book. But um, yeah. guys, there, there's there are better things to spend your money on. Hey, just grab a 20, 20 quid note, let it sight, light it on fire, and that'll be money better spent. I promise you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Amazon. If you're feeling generous and you feel like entertaining yourself to a bit of debauchery, I think that's uh, probably the way yeah, to go. Uh, there's there's plenty of debauchery stories on uh, Amazon. Um, <laughs> probably, I don't know if I'm in that uh, category, but I'm just curious. Now, you you said you were doing an audio book, right? Yes. How how's that going? Isn't that just really time consuming to do? You have no idea if anyone ever writes a book, do not do an audio book, especially if you I started drunk. to do it. I just put it on the back burner because I got sort of pissed off with myself because, you know, you want to make it smooth and then it just takes forever. You know, I've never, I've never been more uptight in my life than I am now. I'm about four weeks into doing my audio book. It is, it's a nine hour piece of work and it's taken me, I, I can't even tell you how long it's taken me. And it's like, if the Horoshima bomb landed on Chernobyl, that's my attempts at doing an audio book. It is a disaster of the highest complex. It is because no one can understand me as, as most people would probably realize after listening to this, yeah. you can't understand a word I said. So I'm, I'm trying to make it articulate without losing too much of the rhythm of the book. 
it's a it's a disaster, <laughs> absolute disaster. Well, good luck with that. We get you in know, there, guys. You can get somebody to do it professionally, but to be honest with you, I've left, listened to a few clips of audio books before, and they're not perfect at all. So, you know, somehow I don't think my anti PC jokes would translate too well with someone <laughs> someone else reading them. So. Oh God. This anyway, the only- so people can find you, yeah, bingfraser.com. Uh, yeah, the website's actually good. They've got a gallery there. I haven't checked it out too. I've called the Blueprint. But it, well, that's good. I'll, I'll play with that, um, you know, over the week or something. But anyway, I just want to say thanks for joining me today. And um, um, I think that's about it. You had any questions at all or anything like that? No, just thank you so much for having me, Malcolm. been a lot of fun. So, Pleasure. Um, Pleasure. Yeah, cheers, everyone. Go on, yeah, go you never know. I might be day. back down in Sydney one of these days. I'll uh, uh, never know. I might look you up. What's that area? I, I, I like Darling Harbour, but there's an area where a lot of restaurants are. And that's that's the first time I ever ate kangaroo. The and rocks is the rocks is famous that, for, its, that's it. for its restaurants. That's it, yeah. it's, it is beautiful. So yeah, if anyone has the chance, the the um, luxury to come to Sydney, it's uh, it goes a little bit of all right, guys. The the harbour and everything else, it won't let you down. So come and visit, eh? I know I know it's a little bit of a hop, skip and a jump, but it's it's worth every, where every you come second. From, though. When I when I first turned up there, I I had my England rugby shirt on. I went through immigration. The guy said there, he said, you got a nerve wearing that round here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but he was cool about it. The Australians are very friendly people as far as I'm concerned, and uh, you have a great country there. So, it was funny. It was funny. He goes, um, was, I was going through the American immigration system and they're pretty, pretty serious there, which is fair enough. And I came home wearing my Hawaiian shirt and shorts and thongs and the bloke at immigration just like, you really think I'm going to let you in the country wearing that? I was like, come on, mate. I'm home, baby. He's like, get in there, dickhead. I'm just like, ah, not quite the American, uh, <laughs> the American welcome that I got in that country, but it's, uh, yeah, slight, slightly different, uh, Immigration, yeah. Well, Russia's even, they got no sense of humor there if you get a good immigration in Russia. But anyway. Yeah, I haven't got that far yet. Yeah. All right. We'll get there one day if you can. All right, buddy. I'll let you go. Thanks for joining me. Be in touch. Cheers, man. Thanks yeah. again, mate. Looking forward to a beer. Take care. See you, mate. Bye-bye.